promotional consideration paid for by the following. Cone Ice. Cone Ice is a shaved ice truck that brings a one-of-a-kind tropical experience to you. Guests can flavor their own Kona Ice on our signature flavor wave, dance to our island music tunes, and enjoy a nutritious and delicious treat. Contact Jeremy and Marissa at 352-403-0515. Don't forget to follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Pat's Taps at Catfish Johnny's. Pat's Taps is Lake Penasofsky's newest tap room, offering 14 rotating craft beers on tap. We also offer bottled domestic beers, seltzers, ciders, and wine, as well as a variety of appetizers and puffs. Our family-friendly tap room is a great place to come hang out and enjoy some one-of-a-kind craft beer. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, or the Untapped app. Is the exterior of your home or business covered in dirt, mildew, or mold? Driveway or walkway stain? Pressure King can make your siding, deck, vents, and concrete look new again with no damage. Pressure King has cleaned the exterior of houses and businesses all over Sumter County area. Usually it takes less than a day and costs less than you would expect. Call AJ at 352-457-7209. All right, welcome back to the Go Blay Show. This is our, I don't even know what episode this is, <laughs> but today's special guest is um, a good friend of mine. I've, I've known him for a long time. We went to preschool together, and mm. uh, that's when it all started, mm. a good friendship. And uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, our guest for today's podcast is Mr. Matt Ellis. Matt, Boom. Matt, how you doing, buddy? Boom, Billy. Glad <clears throat> to be here, buddy. You doing okay? Yeah, man. How's life? Busy. Busy, busy, busy. Yep. Yep. Um, so thanks for being on the podcast. Um, I appreciate you coming down. This is um I, I forgot to mention that this is uh guys, this is my quarterback. This is I always tell him to his face, this is my quarterback. <laughs> um he didn't start with us. He uh he was he was in another area of the of the of the land and uh Started there uh, up north, yep. and um, then came down to fight for the south. So uh, try not to think about it too much. <laughs> <laughs> We're not trying to make anybody mad, okay? Yep. Matt? We're just, yep. Oh my, oh, okay. We got a, we there's you know we got bridges still there. Yeah, no, they're still salty. <laughs> it's okay. True, true. <laughs> um, they're not holding any grudges. <laughs> so uh, let's go. You know, um, we'll start over. We're gonna. We'll start how you got into football, and and then we'll kind of just progress with what you're doing now. Um, so let's let's go back, um, and we're going back to the to the days of old Wildwood Wildcats. Yeah. Um, so tell me what what middle school <clears throat> football was like in, in Wildwood. Yeah. So it, funny tie, right? So there is a guy by the name of Mike Simmons. Yes. Um. The Simmons boys, believe it or not, Mike Simmons. Well, but before that, you had the Floyd Williams era yeah. at the middle school, which you know was phenomenal for Wildwood um, football. He he's you know that guy was incredible when it came to a coach. But anyways, <clears throat> I didn't play any youth football. I didn't do any of that stuff. First time I ever played the game of football was. Uh, seventh grade year, whenever you were eligible to to play. So, so Wawa didn't have a like no. the bandits down here. No, but a lot of guys from up north came down here and played with the bandits. Okay. Like I remember Jarrett Baker, okay, playing for the bandits and stuff, <clears throat> and hearing hearing him talk about that. I was a big baseball guy. Gotcha. Whenever I, you know, that was my first love, I guess, so to speak, in this uh, in the sports world. But so, anyways, yeah. So seventh grade year, I played. I was a center. Wow, yeah, center. Yeah. yeah. Complete opposite. Yep. What I would. played center, but I did not mm. well let's I practiced center. I did not play. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> but uh so anyway, so yeah, that happened to be my seventh grade year at Wildwood Middle School. Happened to be Floyd Williams retired and his coaching staff, Dave Blasberg, uh Coach Howell. I mean, just a, an incredible staff, a lot like what Kinley's built here you know just a long i mean they coached forever together right 
So anyways, uh, so then Mike Simmons, Brian Simmons' brother, got the right. head middle school job. Really? I didn't even know that. And even Studebaker, uh, Coach Studeb- Eric Studebaker was actually on his staff. A lot of South End guys. Gotcha. And uh, so anyways, I don't even, I don't even know. I, I, I don't know who told Mike Simmons that I could throw a football, but he was like, come here. Yeah. Come here, let me see what yeah. you can do. Throw this ball. <clears throat> throw that pigskin. And so that's kind of where it where it started. And then, you know, I was the quarterback for eighth grade Wildwood and that's you know, that's where it all where it all started. That was the first time I ever really picked up to really throw a football competitively ever. Right. Um that was as an eighth grader. So that's what made uh, while I was telling the uh, uh we were talking to Coach. I thought it was Coach Kinley or uh, Your Highness. Like, why would middle school football was like really elite? Oh, was, they were was, dominant. Very dominant. We yeah. And it was a. And if you if you ever did beat, I don't even know if we ever beat them. Like even in our grade. I don't know that Floyd Williams ever lost ever a lost. middle school football I game. That. I believe. That. I really don't. <clears throat> I'm good friends with his son Brian. I'd have to ask Brian, but yeah, no, they haven't. I don't think in that era. I don't think they ever lost a game. Yeah, that was a big. That was a big deal. I yep. mean, and it was almost like, uh, you know, when you get. My dad would always tell me about Herschel Walker back in the day. You know, when they played Florida, yep. four years in a row, they, everybody just forfeited their tickets. So they were not going to beat this guy. Sort of the same <laughs> way. I mean, you you got this idea that these guys are can't be beat. You know. And see, and see, those guys were old school. Right. You know. Get in your face, spit in your face, <laughs> smack you upside the head. All the things you can't do now, you know. Right, right, right. But yeah, yeah man, they they demanded greatness. They, those guys were incredible coaches. They really were. Um, did you? Uh, so you play quarterback, and then you. It, um, so we move on to to let's see freshman year. So I know I know you were in Wildwood your freshman year because you had a you had a, a really decent uh, wide receiver you used to throw to. Yep. Um, Mr. Brian Hogbrook. Yep. Yeah, so the starting quarterback, and, and, and you know, I, I have a terrible memory, but the, the starting quarterback got hurt, <clears throat> and I think I played one JV game, if I remember correctly. <clears throat> and, um, hey, Matt, you're in. Yeah, yeah, you're in. Let's I'm like, it. what? <laughs> I'm like, uh, uh, this isn't a good idea. Right. Scared to death. Oh, my God. And I remember just being – I was just – I was just so scared. I'm like, man, what? The, what? what? Yeah. So, but, yeah, no, Brian Hoggerbrook was, happened to be a senior. That was his senior year. And, um, you know, uh, Wildwood had just hired a new coach. That was his first year. His name was Val Gunn. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, he, he was a big part of my life, I mean, for many years. Right. Um, we ended up down the line in the football playing career. I ended up getting back and, you know, back with him uh, down the road. But um, – uh, so anyway, so yeah, so Brian Hogerbrook, Alfred Corbin, I mean, Wildwood was had some yeah. really talented players that year. And uh so it was helpful. I almost felt like I just took a three step drop and just, just threw, threw it up. Threw it up. <laughs> Come down with Yeah. It. So Well that that was uh that was that helped Brian get in the I mean, that was a great year for him. He he got went down to Florida. Yep. Um had a great you know, he, he did really well there. Um I just remember you guys breaking did y'all break a couple records or something like that? Uh, I mean, it was said that, you know, that uh, we did uh, at that time, I think it was the most yards ever thrown right. uh, that's, by a freshman that's in the state thinking, of Florida or something like that. Combo, yeah. yeah. Which um, is awesome. I mean, that's, yeah. you, speaking of like uh, as a freshman, you know, that's a, right. that's a, big, that's a big. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like it was, you know, uh, after I think of fir- the first couple of games, I think I kind of, you know, I wasn't any, I wasn't scared anymore. Right. You know, I mean, when you're 14 years old, of course, you know, now I watch 14 year old kids now, uh, you know, play varsity ball like it's nothing. Right. You know, but back in those days, I don't think it was something that was a normality. 
especially at the quarterback position. But, well, yeah, yeah, you weren't looking forward to somebody that young taking over right. a position that's, you know, normally uh, an upper classman is doing. Right. You know? Well, you usually look at that position as most teams are built around absolutely a quarterback. You know? Absolutely. So. Um, so then you made a little transfer, <clears throat> yep. transfer portal. Uh, <laughs> went went down to South uh, South Central. <clears throat> yep. Um, it played some baseball there in that that fall, or I mean that that spring. Or? Yeah, I, I was committed to finishing playing baseball. I played for Wildwood baseball, and so I didn't transfer until baseball was over. Over with. Okay. Yeah. okay. So um, I I played baseball at Wildwood. You know, people don't realize, you know, you grew. I grew up with all those guys. I mean, you know, shoot, it, we were tight, tight, tight yeah. with all those guys, you know, because, shoot, we grew up together. Yeah. Playing a little league baseball and yeah, all that stuff. I mean, spending the night at people's houses and, you know, so when it came time to make that decision, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of people hurt, and it yeah. hurt me to make that decision too, yeah. you know, because – you know, and I, it, it just was a hard, hard, difficult decision right. for me to make back in those days. But well, you know, you 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 said something about going. You talking about baseball? I remember, I remember Wildwood baseball being extremely well. I mean, like it's. I remember the tournaments, mm-hmm. and then you know, Wildwood was. I I just a lot of a lot of memories of baseball. Mm-hmm. Not not so much football. Like I took told Coach Sherman, I I didn't realize that we even had a football team right. until I was in sixth grade. Yep. So when I played baseball, you know, you do the tournaments in Wildwood, Bellevue, West, not Western Chapel, Brooksville, wherever. Uh, we even had a tournament down here, uh, down in Webster, when they still had. I the remember league. that. And, um, and I believe you played in that one, correct? You, oh, I rem- I remember very well playing in Webster as right. a little leaguer. Right. Yep. So, um, but then again, everything kind of things change and. People move on to different things. Yep. So you go down south, and um, what's the next step after that? What do you What do you remember your first <clears throat> first time being down there? Yeah. So um, I remember, I remember, you know, coming to South Sumter before I had transferred, and coming to a five a.m. workout. Um. That's whenever we were doing two a day. I don't know two a days or or what, but right. um, I remember coming and watching South Sumter work out, and I I mean it was it was crazy. Mm-hmm. Just the energy, and I had never seen anything like that or been been a part, you know, with uh, of anything like that. Right. So, anyways, that's kind of where I saw that for the first time. Billy Mills was the uh, was the weightlifting coach, and right. he brought a lot of energy. and And just watching the guys and yeah. and seeing, you know, um, so from that point on, it was like, okay, let's do this, you know. Yeah, I, I remember uh, you talking about Mills. I, I told Coach Sherman this. I I remember it being in class. I had him my freshman year, and uh, he would be. It would be like noon, and he's brewing coffee, and he's just like. He already had like, I mean, like you, it, we, you know, not drinking coffee. You, you don't understand what he, he was right. just, just trying to get the energy. You know, yeah, when you yeah. get older, you everybody's got coffee. And you're like, what are you doing? <laughs> but um, yeah, he he was a he was a very uh, energetic person. Yeah, he and, was. Uh, we talked about him. I didn't know he won a few state championships. Yeah, he in, just up, won. He won one this past year. That's awesome. Yeah, I I love to hear. Um, guys go off and do well, yeah. Um, like Yogi and you know other guys, they go and they they get, you know, they 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 find success. So. Yeah, man, it's it's, but I think that that's well, not necessarily Coach Mills, so to speak, but for Yogi's standpoint, I think a lot of that stuff is is bred, right? You know, from well, the Raider program, right? Right, know? absolutely. You go you go elsewhere, yep. and you and you um, you can take those things that you learn yep. and implement them and, you know, so to speak in their plans or yep. whatever. And it, it does help. Um, <clears throat> did you, did you play uh, spring the freshman year? Or was no, it too late? I wasn't, I wasn't eligible to play. Okay. You had to wait till <clears throat> yeah. season. So um, I was here for spring. 
Gotcha. And and practiced my you know that end of my freshman year, uh, but didn't um, but didn't play. Gotcha. So sophomore year. Yep. Um, remember any of those guys on the team? Or you... Yeah, that was. Uh, that was the '98 crew? Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think. '98 would have been. Is that Charlie Hayes? Char- uh, I think. Charlie Hayes might have been, or I think I don't think, I think was Charlie year. Hayes was ninety nine. Yeah, I think it was a year. Like Alan Shirley was ninety nine. Ninety nine. Jonathan Camp was. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jonathan Camp? I do remember Jonathan, Jonathan Camp. Camp. Yeah. Uh, so like James Gross. No, James Gross. Yeah. Was no, he? James Gross would have been that. Yeah. James Gross yep. was my center, my sophomore that's, that's year. That's right. That's right. So Gross and um, a couple other guys. We I know we lost a lot of seniors. That, was the, Bill Bill Durham that? I think so. Maybe. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I I, I mean. Rob Sargent. Oh yeah, yeah. Rob. Bobby Lambert. Well, Bobby may have been ninety nine. Bobby 99. was a year older than us. Um, um, I, I remember Rob Sargent was definitely class of ninety eight. Oh, and so was uh, Russ Henderson. Russ Henderson. That's right. That's right. Russie, yeah. Now you're starting to jog yeah. my memory a little so you bit. Had, you got to go back. And yeah. Remember the guys. That was. Uh, yeah, that was that was a that was a fun fun year fun group. The only thing I can remember is that sophomore year. I remember. The spring game of the sophomore, it would have been the latter part after the season. This might be skipping ahead a little bit. Right. I remember knocking out Mark Henderson in, uh, in the spring game. I know that sounds weird, but Sherman made all the offensive guys play defense too in the spring. So he'd make me play safety. So, man, I, we were playing Lacanto, I believe, in the spring game. He puts me in. I'm back there. Safety marks like a middle linebacker or something. As a Mike Mike Henderson. Yeah. No, Mark. Mark. Mark was on. Okay. On our team. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Mark. Okay. I think Mark. Henderson. I think I think it was that you talking about Russ's brother. No. Oh no. I thought. I no thought no no Mike. no. Mark. Maybe I have the last names missed. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I don't we're know. Talking about, we're talking about uh, what, 20, 20, almost 25 yeah. years ago? Yeah. yeah. So I just remember uh, a guy coming across the middle, yeah. slant route, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm fixing to eat him up. Gonna light him up. Oh, yeah. Close my eyes, and I just absolutely destroy Mark. <laughs> <laughs> you friendly fire. <laughs> oh, man. Sherman was like, oh, you don't ever have to worry about playing defense again. <laughs> like, oh, that's great. I didn't want to. Uh, the but, key is not to close your eyes. Yeah. I just remember I thought I killed the the receiver. And I ended up looking down. I was like, "Oh, my bad, Mark. <laughs> Let me help you up, buddy." Oh, you're not responding. Okay, uh, need some help over here. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, yeah. so let's move junior year. Let's see, junior year, you gotta um, going back is- to that sophomore year though. We 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 had to play. We always played Trinity Jacksonville Trinity Catholic. Oh, we yeah. never played, never played. Well, we played played bowls once in the playoffs. How'd that work out for us? I think it was my junior year. We played bowls, or maybe we didn't. We didn't even. Anyways, I don't know. Again, <laughs> freaking so long ago. We got to write this stuff down, yeah. man. But Jacksonville Trinity Catholic <laughs> was was the team that you know. We had issues getting by every year. Yeah, I think I think I remember <clears throat> that team because we they I think one time we were up fourteen nothing or twenty one nothing. Josh at Miller broke two two traps back to back series right. for touchdowns, and yep. then it, then the half ended, and when they came out and they're like, it was like, all right, it's TC time. Yeah, we and ended up just, yeah, we ended up losing like forty eight to fourteen. <laughs> <clears throat> That's what I'm saying. Like we, that was uh, the second year. That was Josh's senior year. So the pr- year prior, right? They had beat us really bad. Same I don't even think we scored. Sound we like, may have scored once. Wow. Just showed up. Yep. Get our five hundred thousand. So, yep. Right. <laughs> FCS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the big contract. But yeah, no. Uh, so yeah, sophomore year was that was kind of a blur. I don't I don't remember a whole lot from my. Sophomore year, but I think it was really just because it's first year in, new guys, you're yeah. trying to get acclimated of being in a new spot, not right. knowing anybody, you right. know, that kind of thing. Right. So, and you're making that transition period. Yep. How about baseball? How about was sophomore year a little bit? Was it since you played Wildwood or you played for Wildwood in, in your freshman year? What was it like the similarities, differences? You know, like was it a big difference in transition? Like, were you? Like the next year when you played your sophomore year, you're so playing baseball at South Sumter, right, you mean? Yeah. Um, well, you know, 
why would what, Steve Doggett was the head coach? Yeah, um, Mr. Doggett. But, yeah, God bless him. Yeah. But, uh, <clears throat> And we actually had a pretty pretty good baseball team at Wildwood there. Right. <clears throat> I remember I remember as a freshman playing South Sumter and I had already knew and guys knew from South Sumter I was transferring and I started that shortstop on varsity for Wildwood and we played South Sumter. And I wanna say I went like two for three with two doubles. I hit one off the wall my freshman year and I looked over at South Sumter's bench and said, This is what you're getting. <laughs> I was so cocky back oh, in those days. Golly, oh. I looked back and I was like, man, that Matt, guy was – that man. that high school Matt Ellis was something else. But, um, yeah, that, so so anyways, come south something. But um, that sophomore year, again, I, I just – I don't I, – it's hard to remember yeah. who no, that's was all good. on just, that team. I, I remember junior and senior years very well. Yeah. But that sophomore year was kind sophomore. of a – Well, a it, it is a, – it's a transition period. So you're kind of like, well, you know, you just – you know, you're just getting a feel of the program itself, yep. the campus, everything, the, yep. you know, how everything works. Yep. So I could see that being like a little bit of a blur. Yeah. So so junior year, it's it's different because you've got a year in now. Yep. You're not a, a newbie yep. by any means. So um, <clears throat> what are some highlights? What what stands out for you on the on the junior year? I know. I can talk about your senior year, but junior year, I, I don't really remember that much. Yeah, so junior, you know, junior year was a fun year for football and baseball. Um, you want to talk about baseball first? It, it don't matter. We'll talk, I, I don't mean to switch back and forth. Yeah, but no, I, 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 base. So the junior year of baseball, we, I want to say at that point in time, well, we we had put together. I think we were like twenty four and two. Okay. Um, wow. Yeah, made it to the uh, to the Elite Eight. Mm -hmm. um, we were a game away from making it to the Final Four. But, man, alive, the, the guys that were on that team. Oh, was that the Keystone Heights game? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. Shout out to Justin Coleman for yep. – for he told me about that game. Dude, we were, we were so – we were so loaded. Justin yeah. Sim – listen, I – you know, Justin Simmons was – Justin Simmons was probably one of the best athletes that I've ever played with. I, I would bar have, none. I'm absolutely. talking football too. People don't realize it. I didn't know about football, dude. Justin Simmons was that dude. He was crazy. Yeah. Um, and an incredible best baseball player I, I've ever played with. Absolutely, I tell people that all the time, <clears> and they 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 always because a lot of people don't really know about him, but no. I'm like I'm like man, I'm telling you what, dude, he was, he, he he was. Absolutely, yeah, he was. He I was, agree with you. 100%. He was good. He was really good. I, I, I've always said that. And um, another one um, that I thought was but gone too soon was uh, was Tater Jackson. Oh, oh my yeah, God. just a power. Yep, Tate. Um, yep, yeah. Well, just you know, there were so many guys. Again, it, it's hard to explain, and I you know, it was just so many, so many good, good athletes yeah. that that were, you know, you. Like for me, it, going back to so just back to football that that junior year, you had so many guys that um, just were surrounded with not just good football players, but right. they're good athletes, but just right. good dudes, man. I mean, we were tight. Oh yeah, really tight. Um, you know that was the Alan Shirley's senior year. That's right. Uh, so you had Alan, Charlie, um, Josh Miller, Josh Miller. Um, West Jennings, or no, West Jennings, man. West been Jennings the was the year before. Year, yeah. year before. Yeah. Um, but just good people. Yeah. You know, and you suit up and go to war with them any any time. Yeah. You know. Um, and that makes a big difference. You oh know? yeah, that makes a big uh, a difference for because I could I I've heard stories about how when people are playing with the, you know for each other and it's a lot different when they like each other. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because you know somebody might miss a block. Or vice versa. Yep. Uh, you know, they keep – one might yell, at, hey, you, you missed that block. And they go, all right, I'm going right. to this next play. Yeah. I'm going to let this guy go. And you're going to get hammered. <clears throat> yeah, and see, that's where – to me, that's that's kind of what, you know, Sherman and Steele, man, it was it, it was it was family. Yeah, I mean, he, he taught us to play for each other. Play for your brother. Yep. Yeah, yeah and, absolutely. You know, and we did. And, and when we didn't like something that somebody else was doing, I mean, we were brothers. Yeah. I mean, I vaguely remember grabbing – 
Clinton Crosley's face mask and, you know, yeah. getting, getting in his, you know, and same thing for him, him getting, you know, right. getting on to me or whatever, right. you know, but it's just what we did. You know, we demanded so much from each other. Yeah, I think I think that's what makes you a better team is when you demand the best out of everybody, and yep. not just yourself, but everybody else. Right. And then they turn around and do the same thing for you. I mean, you you, I mean, it's hard to do that nowadays because you know people are just so. I don't want to say they're selfish, but they, there's a lot of me play out there because yep. you know you got all these things that. I mean, look at look at college <laughs> where hey, I'm I'm gonna leave because why? Because I didn't yep. get to play. It's always I or me or yep. there's no we anymore you no know what I mean? there's there's not man the game has changed so much I, I i personally believe that you know and i i tell some of the south center guys this uh, when i get out there but you know the the thing is is that everybody has an individual battle right you know in the midst of that game right. that they've got to win right and if and if you know you don't hold that individual accountable to win his war, his battle, right? Right. Everybody's got a battle to win so that we can come together and win a war. So when you go to war on Friday nights, you know, all those little individual battles got to be won. And it's about holding each individual accountable so that they can win that, you know, win that battle. And, right. um, you know, I, you're right. It's, 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 it's hard nowadays, man, because yeah. – I don't know this generation's you know I got kids in this growing up in this mess too you know so it's it's hard but it is it's it's gotten any more to where it's it's all about you know what's what's good for me yeah you know so you see a lot more days now that kids feel more sorry for themselves than anybody else you know what I mean yep. like they'll get down on themselves and then and then that's it they're done yep they shut down so quick I mean I'm not saying that's never happened before right but it just seems like I don't know the mental stability of players now or it's so shallow. Yeah. Well, it's, it's easy to, it, it, it's all at home. It's home stuff to me, I, to I me. And it. that's just a personal mm, opinion. I get it. Yeah. But, I mean, but I think that, that very you know, well could be. you have to nowadays, I feel like, you know, I'm shoot. I'm guilty of it sometimes too. It's a lot easier just to let stuff go and baby a kid instead of give them tough love and, yeah. You know, uh, and be hard on a kid. Right. You know, sometimes it's just easier to, you know, baby him, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. And so I think that kids get wrapped up in that. And mentally, it makes them mentally soft. Right. You know? Well, so. I think I think a lot of people, they miss, there's a misconception of tough love and just being honest. Right. You know what I mean? You can't coach a kid to do better if you can't be honest. Right. You can't they, they can't throw a, a baseball the wrong way and go that was great correct keep doing it that's see, the worst thing you right. can do and I mean it's it, it is oh. and it, and it's it's tough because like you said you don't want to you know you you, you want to be careful and not not hurt the kids feelings but at the same time right. and, and then you know parents also get their feelings hurt right. you know so it's kind of a you know you feel like you have to walk that fine line right. I. I you know, I was the guy that coached Little League, and, I mean, I don't know. That wasn't me. I was the guy that was – Yeah. And and the guys I coached with, we were all about, Yeah. you know, giving the tough love. Right. So um, – and it's fun to see because all those kids are now sophomores here. Yeah, almost grown. You know, and it's – you know, it's fun to see – you know, Have you had anybody come back and, and tell you that they appreciate it? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. See that that makes it but, all. But see, I uh, yeah, and see, I still keep in touch with all those kids, yeah. man. I love those kids. Yeah. I mean, golly, I love those kids. Some of them are, you know, to watch them be successful and and all that. I mean, every time I see them, it's it's a big old hug. Right. I mean, those I love them kids like my, my like they're my own. Yeah. You know. So. Uh, not to not to go too far into the mm -hmm. to but I remember I mean when you helped coach quarterbacks mm -hmm. at the at the high school, you took an you know you 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 made an accept like a a a, a good relationship between um, like Levi and yeah. um, and uh, Clay Simmons mm -hmm. and uh, at, at that from from outside looking in, it looks it's it's a it's a cool thing. You yeah, know, when you can when you can go up and talk to somebody about anything, you're a mentor. Uh, that to me, that's yeah, I, it is. 
But what the you know what most people don't realize, and I think that even most coaches would tell you this, is that you know what I gave them is nothing. Oh yeah, of what they gave me. Uh, right. I mean, what those kids taught me, and what those those kids loving on me right. gave me more than what. Absolutely. I could ever give them. Absolutely. And, and that's, you know, I think a lot of coaches would tell you that. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Catfish Johnny's Restaurant, serving the Lake Penasofsky and surrounding areas since 1990. For the last 33 years, we have strived to serve great food at great prices and a friendly, casual atmosphere. If seafood isn't your thing, our burgers or wings are the best around. We have daily specials, too. Check us out on Facebook or Instagram for more information. Central Screen Services, LLC, in collaboration with Mask and Sons Incorporated. All screen services are available. We offer a variety of colors, durability, and sizes for all your screen needs. Pool areas, patios, and more. Call 352-603-4099 today for your free estimate. Proudly serving all of Citrus, Sumter, Hernando, Lake, and Pasco counties. To find out more, check them out on Facebook. Lions Only Landscape. Looking for landscaping or trimming done in your yard? They provide services such as landscaping, rocking, curbing, driveways, and more. Proudly serving the Villages area. Reach out to Mike Zapata or Fernando Arredondo for free quotes and more info. Duto Realty is a homegrown business with an eye for getting the job done right. From football games to Sunday school and everything in between, these ladies care about our community and the people in it. Helping buyers and sellers in all of Florida with all types of transactions including residential, commercial, farm, or vacant land. They do it all. They even offer auction services and sellouts to always get the job done right. Um, But yeah, I mean... I don't know how long I was. I helped coach. I think it was uh, six, seven years, roughly. I probably was on on staff, so to speak, that helping Coach Sherman. But you know, those time times of my life. I mean, that's yeah. you know, yeah. But I mean, not everybody can run on the field and give the cutthroat <laughs> sign. <laughs> well, everybody knows Billy that I'm a very passionate individual. <laughs> And I love competing. <laughs> love competing. Well, you know, okay, so just to <clears throat> shine a little light on that story, I did not do that in- yeah, you intentionally. Did. Yeah, you did. It's okay. I, I'm okay with it now. Yeah, I really am. I'm totally fine. Golly. <laughs> I was instructed by Coach Sherman. He can tell you the same thing. He may not say this directly, but he'll, he'll own up to it one day. He told me, if there's ever anything that happens after a game, film it. Cause you never know. It could, you never know. And so I, for, for, for those of you, you do, who don't know, we played Jacksonville Reigns and it was a tough school to play. And we weren't, I don't think we were picked to win. Were we? No, I mean, was, we weren't no, picked to win. It was an absolute upset. It comes down to a final play and we stop them. I think they go to pass and knock Keanu it. knocks it down. Kiki, Kiki knocks it down. And we just go crazy. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm up filming. I zoom. I pan over just in case. I don't know what's going to go on next. And I see this st- staff member run <laughs> across the field and give him the oh, yeah. cutthroat sign. So, I mean, it was all it was all yeah, a competitive but it, nature. But it, it, was, it was. But see, what, what, what <laughs> people don't realize is that before that game, yeah. before that game got started, Jacksonville Reigns was outside their locker room, coaches including, included, you know, just, I mean, hammering us. And then they were on the other side of the 50, uh, hammering yeah, us, yeah. talking junk. Pre-game. Yeah. Yeah. And so I had picked that coach out because we were jawing back and forth because he was on our 50 on the other oh, side of our 50. And yeah. so I went to him and said, look, man, you're in our way. Yep. So w- I had already had him pointed out. Yeah. I like and, that. and I'd looked at him during that pregame yeah. and told him basically, you, you about to get shocked. <laughs> so, you know, and, and, and listen, coach Sherman, no <laughs> coach Sherman. I mean, I mean, it's all it, in it, good fun now, listen, but I remember he was Coach Sherman, not very Co- happy. Coach with Sherman used to hate me and Coach English on the sideline. I mean, me and Coach English, Coach English would blame stuff on me. I would blame stuff on Coach English. Oh man, those are some good times. Co- but Coach English, we played 
either I think it was I can't remember if it was Zephyr Hills or this is gonna sound really bad, but what was the team from um St. Pete? Um Lakewood. Lakewood. Yeah. He was out there jawing at oh, some yeah, kid man. and the and Love the, Coach kid, English. the kid looks at him and goes, Shut up, old man. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, this kid, that's the wrong guy. This kid, that's the wrong guy to say that to. Man. And 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 he did, and he just laughed. Yeah. He just laughed it off. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is what is going to happen? Somebody, somebody, get a camera out yeah. real quick. Another thing. To, so so I never rode the bus because I didn't want to get home late. So on True. away games. True. So guess who always rode with me? Coach Coach English. English. Coach English and AJ. And AJ. And Brian Simmons. That's usually right. those usually those three guys That's always right. rode with me. And um for four or five years. Yeah. So dude, we were we were tight. I mean yeah. tight. Yeah. And and oh so many good stories that I can't share on air. But <laughs> we we had a blast. But I love Coach English. But yeah, so I had pointed I had that guy pointed out. Yeah. And 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 man oh man there was so much exuding from me when we won that game oh yeah and so much passion and yeah. so much oh man it you was were, you were on cloud nine, i was brother. on beeline buddy I, I i went straight to that guy <laughs> and the most embarrassing part of it is you know and it's funny because coach sherman always gave me tough love yeah. love coach sherman he, he's I mean, incredible man did a, so many things for me and taught me so many things in my life <clears throat> But he he embarrassed me in front of everybody because uh, you remember you know everybody came down to the field yeah yeah that's parents right. included right all the fans right and right there in that moment he after everybody gets quiet to listen to Coach Sherman talk after the game his very first words were Coach Ellis take your over there and go apologize to that head coach right now and then take go and then take yourself and go home. <laughs> oh man, I didn't know all that. Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah. Wow. I was I was in hot water, and uh, so I did. I went to that head coach and apologized, and I had to eat some eat, eat some crow eat some crow that day. Wow. And then I was scared to death to show up to practice. <laughs> 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 He's gonna I did, make you run to the tree. Yeah, run to the tree yeah. or do up downs or something. I was like, well, yeah, I don't know man. what I'm in for, but. Yeah, so but obviously it was all good after that. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, you know, of course they all laugh about it now, including Coach Sherman and <laughs> they to this day it's one of the, you know. Yeah. I'm about to find that video. Including all the guys, you know, Chance and uh Oh yeah, that's, the D-Dub and yeah, all those guys wow. still talk about that. Yeah. Like Daring could talk. He yeah, he, he taunt he, people. Oh yeah. Field. So, but hey, you know. But I was known for that. That's <clears> what I was known for. Of course, I was known for that and <laughs> While you in play, my career, you play. I was, you I just, did, I played with a lot of confidence. Right. People say it was cocky, it may have been, but I, I mean, if I'm the guy, and I, I tell my kids this. Yeah, I tell my kids this. When you step foot out on a field, I don't care what field it is, in your head, you the best sob on the field. Right, you got to be. Ain't nobody bad. better than you. That's right. And and I and I believe that. Yeah. Well, so, we just watched that video from uh, Lake Highland Prep. Yeah. You ran. Drawley runs the counter, and you're you're over there. Whoa. <laughs> you were uh, yeah. Johnny Manziel before I was, the money. But that's right. I made Johnny. That's exactly what uh, I thought of when I saw. It. I was like, "That's Manziel." Uh, oh. But yeah, no. I mean, I just I played the game with a lot of a lot of passion and yeah. and you know a lot of confidence and 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 I tried to you know be a leader to help other guys do that too. You know. Yeah, I, I listen. And, and when we were we were in school, I you were it, man. You were our quarterback. You were you were it. You were you were the leader of the team. Yep. Everybody knew that, mm -hmm. and they all we all confided in that. We 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 were all along for the ride. We yeah. drank the Kool Aid, brother. Well, I, I appreciated them letting me letting me lead. You know, uh, you know, me and Booby were, you know, we were two peas in a pod, buddy. Yeah, and. Clinton's one of my best. I mean, one of my best friends, and you know, shoot, we we talk all the time to this day. And I mean, you know, he's a brother, but we, I mean, we demanded it, man. Yeah. So. Well, I mean that 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 went a long way. I mean, it went further than just sports. You mean you're talking about oh, yeah. the rest of your life? Absolutely. I, I think that's the best thing about sports the yep. the the brotherhood, the camaraderie. 
Yeah. I mean, they, everybody. I mean, they have. It's the same as the military. You yeah. Know, once a once a brother, always a brother. You know. Yeah, I always say that it's a fraternity like no other. To yeah, me, no doubt. I mean, people laugh at me, cut up about high school football, and you know, yeah, but it, 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 you talk about oh, you live in the old days, and you know, blah well, blah no, blah. But but you know what? These day, those days seem a lot better some days than these yeah, days. You know, well, what I'm saying? I, I tell you what, man. I mean, life ain't easy, and yeah. and life's a struggle, and. I mean, I've had my own trials and tribulations, and I will tell you for sure that through my ups and downs, that my sports background and and the people that were in my life during those times and the things that I learned and were taught, right? Not to say that everything I was taught or that was instilled in me, I you know followed through with, so to speak. Yeah. I failed in things, obviously, but. Um, but through those failures, yeah, I am where I am now because of the people who I surrounded myself with right. at an early age, right, and the things that I was taught in my sports career. And so, you know, you come from good stock. Your parents are oh man, your parents are amazing. Yeah, they're good people. They're, I, good I'm, people. Yeah, you know, I feel the same way about mine. Good people. We're both blessed. Very, but that very that generation, much. that generation was, you know, different. Yeah, uh, if you ask my dad, he'll say his dad's generation. Well, yes, I will agree to that. Yeah, well, which, that's too, which, that too. Which I mean, without them, we, 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 you know, there's a lot of things that, well, that generate my, you know, our dad's parents. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's yeah. our country was built upon them. I, I mean, that's my opinion, but well, they, they for one, know. they saved it. I mean, well, yes, been, you know what I mean. Well, they may not have had the 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 foundation going, but they yep. they they saved it from going into bankruptcy. Yep. But yeah, no, I mean, I mean, my, you know, everybody has a hero in life. Right. I mean, shoot, my dad is, he's up there, man. And my mom too. But, you Absolutely. know, as a, as a guy, yeah. you, you know, dude, I, I, I never, ever, ever woke up as a kid and my dad was still laying in the bed. Ever. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I mean, I don't remember my dad not going to work. Yeah. I'm sure the same for your dad. Yeah. I mean, they were just always doing something. They were for the family, right? You know, and shoot, they ain't go to the doctor. <laughs> they don't. No, you know, my, they don't. let me tell you something. My dad, he had that massive heart attack, and he and it, and I, I, I'm obviously it could have been probably detoured from if he would have just went and got his heart checked. Yep, I had no idea. You know, you talking about a massive heart attack? And oh yeah. He just, I mean, he he had people see my dad and they see me and they go, "How are you guys the same?" Mm-hmm. You know, blood. You know, but there's a lot of traits and similarities my dad and I have. But he just he just worked out every every other day, yeah. man. He did it for well since he was a kid, right? And you talk about discipline and doing something. You know, he he was something that yeah. that's, he looked forward to doing, that. right? Um, but he was. Even in that good of shape, you know, you can't predict yep. what your body's going to do. No. So a lot of people, you know, they, I don't know. He just, I'm just so glad he's still here. You know, it's one of those things where um, that was, that was something I'll, you know, I, I don't want to really go into this too far, but it was one of the most traumatic things I've ever experienced. Yeah. And uh, what's the weird part is he didn't know any of this because right. he, was, he was in a coma. Um, or and he and he he was out, and I said I told my dad I said I dad I don't I don't know what happened that day, and I'm not taking any credit, but I do know one thing. I said, you know, when that doctor told me that you were good to go for that moment, it was like I could finally, you know, mm-hmm. take a breath and man, you talk about well, scary. I think that we, you know, we we never want to unexpectedly have to go to a parent's funeral, right? Oh, yeah, I no. think we expect that, of course, you know, a parent never wants to bury a child. Bury a child. Correct. You know, it, it's almost expected that we have to do it down the line, Yeah. but you don't want to do it until, yeah. you know, like life expectancy of, right. you know, hey, okay, you're 90, 95 or well, whatever yeah, you then, live to. You know, it's thing. kind of like expected, but I can't imagine how you felt that day. That was, you know... And it, it was 
it was something that, like, normally I think about now and I go, I don't know if I want to, just something in you takes over. Yeah. You know, because my mom and sister were there. Yeah. And they were, I remember my sister being a little more cool-headed than my mom. My mom was hysterical. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. But my sister tried to, she was helping me as as best she could. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it was just one of those things where, you know, I'll still have these reenactments in my head and I'm thinking, what did I, what did, what happened? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? It, it's almost like it's not real. And then I'll watch a, yeah. I'll watch something on TV and it'll, and it'll, it'll trigger it. And I'll, and I'll automatically think about it. And I can go for months yeah, uh, without thinking about it. Well, I mean, believe what you will, but I, I think that the Heavenly Father equips us with stuff that um, we don't even know that we have equipped. Right. We're not even equipped with. Well, that's the thing. Is so, that's why I can't take credit for that. I you know, might have been there, and I might have, I might have been actually doing yeah. it, but I wasn't there. Right. It wasn't me. No. And I, and I, I 100%. I, yep. People say, oh, you saved your dad. Shit. No, I can't. There's, I'll never take credit. I was just used. Absolutely. I was used in that in, in that moment. Absolutely. Which is pretty dang cool. And so, and that, right. and, and stuff like that. That happens, you know, builds faith right. like crazy. Well, you know? you know, one of the surreal parts is we, we get over to the hospital and they what they didn't tell us was he flatlined like six times, six more times, in the, six something times. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times in the, in the ambulance. Yeah. So they get him to, they get him to Leesburg and they, and they start, you know, they get him where he's in there and he's stable. And, um, man, I'll never forget this. I, I walk in the ER and um, it was like a scene from like ER or, or some kind of medical aid, mm-hmm. scrubs or whatever, whatever. And it's and it's it's all this stuff going on. You couldn't have filmed it better. But I'm walking straight, almost like a music video. Yeah. The camera's going forward, and people are going <laughs> back and forth. And then there's this doctor has his back to me. Yeah. And I and I get close, and this he turns around, and he he just. He he never even he never said a now that I remember he never said a word to me other than he's gonna be just fine. I don't know how he knew who I was. Yeah, but he knew who I was there for. Right, and I just dude, I was I was I was great until that part, and I yeah. was just like, oh dude, I can't, I, I, I got yeah. I lost it because it was just so much so much emotional buildup. Yeah, and it was it was crazy. Yeah, but I will never ever forget walking in there, and you got this. Just commotion and people, and it's just your traditional ER scene, and boom, 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 and through this door, this door, and then you get to the doctor, and he's like, "Hey, it's gonna be just fine." Yep. And those were the words I was looking for. I wanted confirmation, yep. you know. And then the whole ride over there, I just kept saying, "I did the best I could." Yep. I did the best I could. And I don't, I don't know what would have happened if, if that would have been on the other side of the coin. Right. I don't know. I mean, you 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 get through it, but I just remember so much. It's like when I almost want to found out because I was a bad student. Um, when I found out I was going to graduate, mm-hmm. you know, I, I I had to do all this stuff to get the grades and blah blah blah, and, and I just remember that over overwhelming feel, like, right? You know, um, but I don't know. I don't know. We t- just. I mean, to just. Yeah. Go from that. I mean, it's. Yeah, man. I mean, again, I, I think that, you know, it's something to be said about, um, again, it's about, it's a lot about the home life, man. I, I, I really believe that. Um, and just, you know, we got, we got really good. We got lucky. We did. You know, we got, we and got you, some great. Parents. And your mom, your mom was, uh, well, as I said before in the beginning, was our teacher in pre K. Yeah. And uh, she was like a uh, almost like another mother to me. Yeah, you know. And as I grew up, and I, and I went to the south, and I went, you know, we went to Wildwood for the pre K. Yep. When I was the only one, you know, I remember going to to the primary school, and they're showing them, oh, this is where you're going to go to school next year. And I'm yeah. like, I got excited. I'm like, All right. <laughs> and my mom's like. You're not going. Not you. No, but, and she wasn't mean about it. She was just yeah. like, you got, you know, because she left her job and all this. I didn't, uh, this is all out of my idea. Yeah. And I had no idea what, what the next plans were, yeah. but we ended up going to Webster. But I was like, 
I was like so so let down because you know these are my friends and right. So I know exactly what you mean by leaving yes. and going somewhere else. And yep. it, it's a it's a of course that was out of my hands. I had no idea. Right. But um, yeah, you know. I mean, well, you know, and then it, when you play, when you go back and you play those guys, I mean, just like you know the junior year. I remember get I remember get in my junior year. I remember scrambling out of bounds. Yeah. And basically getting hit on the track, they did throw a flag, which I was happy to see. Late, you know, but it's like, geez, man. I mean, I know y'all don't like me right now, but golly, can you help yeah. me brother out? Yeah. Uh, I so think those games for anybody. So those games, and those were must-win games. Yes. Especially me, Jeremy Cole, Jarrett Baker, Josh Miller. You know that whole group that right. we all migrated down here. Uh, those were must-win games. Yeah. We were not losing. Yeah, I don't. We, we, it just wasn't an option. Right, it wasn't an option, and uh, those were some hard fought games, especially that senior year of ours. That senior year that uh, you and Coach Sherman talked about. Yeah, what a fun game that was. Absolutely, that I was mean, a great. That was a great game, and, and um, it's even it, it's still good to watch on film the entire game, not just yeah. highlights, but the whole game. I I got a copy of it. Um, it's it's sad that it's on VHS. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I'm like. Oh, I gotta get that converted over to why did MP4 why did v, uh, what was it v, what was the TV show uh, villages VNN VNN That's, did VNN I, I had the highlights oh That's what they didn't video they didn't do because no, no, you remember they, they, they used to there. do the whole game they, yeah they they were there but they yeah. but they they did like a you know because they yeah. do like the highlights and I remember copying that yeah and that's what I took to like I was saying I went to my family yeah. You know, Hey, y'all watch this. And I'm like, oh, yeah. we don't want to watch that. Let me go get a plate of turkey. So, yeah, I mean, it's like. <clears throat> I'd like to know how many people were at that game. Uh, there was, that was, it was. Man, that place was packed. It was a big. Golly, it was packed. And it was loud. I mean, it was, it was, that was probably, well, it was by far the my favorite high school game. Yeah. Uh, in my career. Absolutely. That I played in. Um, um And it, Especially since we were, uh, we weren't leading at all. You know, we had to. No, we couldn't stop Brad Lee. Brad Lee was. Brad Lee stopped himself. That's what happened. And of course, you know the the Wildwood faithful say that, you know, we cheated <laughs> because because Booby did the same thing or something. I don't know. I we. I don't know. I can't, I, I'm not saying he did. I don't know. I don't. I don't remember seeing. But, that, but. I, I will say this: that game would have been a lot harder to win if Brad Lee would have. Oh no doubt. Would have He's would a, have been able to because we couldn't stop him. Right. He was a stud. He, I, he I, was. I, yeah. I give him credit. He was. He was. I mean, he, he had two special. touchdowns. That's. What, I mean, that's what got him kicked out. But I just. I mean, six two, two forty in high school run, yeah. running a probably ran every bit of a four four four. I mean, dude, just a. He reminded me of Eddie George. Yeah, yeah, no, all right. his run, the way he ran too, but yeah, running stuff. That Wildwood team was loaded, man. I tell people all this all the time. Think about South Sumter and Wildwood that year. Yeah, and think about all the guys who played at South Florida. Brian Dixon, South Flo- went to South Florida. Right. Sharon Pearson went to South Florida. Cedric Battles went to South Florida. Those were three guys from. Wildwood. Wildwood. Our guys that went was Booby. Yeah. Nathan C went to Right. He played a line. Went went to South Florida. Sam Miller went to South Florida. Right. Uh Lily went to South Florida. Right. Ben. Um Ben went to South Florida. Uh Craig went too, right? Josh Miller transferred from J U and went to South Florida. Right. So he he actually played at South Florida too. Right. Um, trying to think, but anyways, let's just call it and say ten. Yeah, ten kids from Sumter County right. was on South Florida's roster in the early to mid two thousand. Two thousand, yeah, right. Crazy, right? Right. That's uh, yeah, that is crazy. I mean, I, I mean the the talent has always been there. Oh yeah, but the only it, bad thing is you gotta you gotta um you have to share, right? You know. I mean, yeah. it can't, I mean, imagine if we were all. On oh the team. yeah, I mean, people have said that for years. I know they have, but you know, I mean, but but it's hard to do that because it's just so much, yeah, so much ground some, to yeah. cover, though. It, yeah, it's too much for buses and all. Yeah. I mean, it'd be a lot, but 
I, I say that to say that, you know, that – well, my senior year, it, both our teams were, you know, we were we were very well right. rostered. Right. You know. and uh, Full of dip. I just remember running to the W after that game was over and jumping on it and, you know, going nuts. There were so many people at that game. You know? Oh, yeah. It was it – was, you know, the – there was a game in Wildwood that was recent. It was right after COVID. And I'm up in the crow's nest, and I look down. It's at halftime. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, they ain't social distancing here. <laughs> There's, there was nowhere to – I mean, the, even, it was standing room. Yeah. It was crazy, man. It was yeah. like – and this is this is post-pandemic, you yep. know? Yep. Like, not even a, like, not even a year later. Yeah. Well, and, and I'm glad that – I'm glad that Wildwood – you know, I'm glad that they, uh, you know, had got to the point to where they could compete a little bit with right. what, you know, we had at South Sumter. That, it's good for the county. Oh, absolutely. I hate that we lost to them. What was it, two years ago or whatever it was? But, you know, those tight games like that, yeah, it's it's good, man. It's yeah. good for the county. They got they definitely have speed. I'll say that. They've oh, dude, they Wildwoods speed. always had the. Listen, I, I'll say this. Wildwood has always. Always had more athletes walking the halls, yeah, than never, South Sumter. But they don't show up. They just, yeah, I don't know yeah. what happens. Uh, I don't know if it's because can't get the can't get the kids to come out, or you know what it is. But well, in the last few years, obviously they've been able to get the kids to come out because right. they've been right, right, right. You right, know right, they've right. been they've been right. good. So, but uh, but yeah. But you got to think about they've been sharing quite a bit of people with the other team the green team we call them yeah um which didn't help because that was right after that yeah so um um, that was after our senior year that that they kind of came to be i don't i don't know when they had their the program was i think 2003 maybe two maybe 2002 2003 somewhere around there yeah yeah. because the high school wasn't even there when we were seniors right no no yeah yeah it's definitely has i mean it's put a damper on you know, Wildwood and South Center. I right. mean, it hasn't hurt South Center as much, but there are definitely kids that probably would go to school at both places that right. now go to the villages. And of course, with them building a new school, there's no telling what. There's no telling what, you know, what that's going to do. You know, I, I, I. We have such an incredible staff, man. I mean, yeah. I'd be surprised if we didn't retain, you know. Well, that's the thing is, you know, you got to. I guess you have to find out yourself that the grass is not always greener. You know, you go to these different yep. places. Um, I mean, I know there's a kid that w- went to IMG and he came back here. Right. Um, so, I mean, either you don't like it or maybe something happened. I don't know why, why the people leave. Yeah. And they have their own reasons. I'm not, I'm not saying anything about that because people, people got to do what they got to do for themselves. Right. Yeah. But, I mean, it, it's tough. I mean, again, being a dad and being in that those situations and you know having two boys that you know we we tra- we transferred I transferred my two boys right uh, we never played high school football for the district that we were district for but you know I I think as parents you always feel like you you try to do what's best for your kids right um you know, no disrespect to anybody's program or anything like that. Um, you know, it's just wanting to put your kid in a different situation, Yeah. you know, whatever it may be. But I also will say this, that a lot of kids don't get to make that call. It's parents, parents making do. that call right? saying, this is what we're going to do because I believe this is what's best. And right. the kid is left to say, oh, okay, yeah. well, I really don't want to, but if you're saying it's what's best for me, I guess I need right. to do it. So I think, you know, today's world, I think a lot of it has to do with the parents, not necessarily the kids wanting to transfer. Right. So, but the kid, but the kids also, they always take the heat from it. Yeah. The parents don't ever hear it. Right. From you know, from the other athletes and stuff, yep. coaches, whatever, they don't ever hear the. Yeah, and 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 for me, I, I'll never fault a, a kid or a parent yeah. that are trying to necessarily better themselves, or they think that it's going to better themselves. Right. By all means, you know right. that's. I'm all all for that, but right. um, of course, whenever you're a Raider, you know I believe that the best opportunity is here. I mean, it's you know 
Right. There is not a staff. Uh, I mean, there may be. If there is, somebody tell me. But there's not a staff that is for the kids and works as hard as that South Sumter staff. The one we got, yeah. I mean, the hours that are put in are just crazy. Yeah. I mean, so. Absolutely. And that's the reason why I think it's the, it's the I, best place. Why it's so successful, yeah. It's because yeah. They, they do it. Mm-hmm. And they do it for pennies on the dollar. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people don't understand that's all the work that goes into it. I mean, going from, I mean, just from the simple things when, when we had to, you know, as a lot of people don't realize, Keith Howman did our, our you know, mark the field for mm-hmm. almost 30, or 30 years, I guess. Yeah. Um, you, you know, something from like that to, you know, washing the jerseys. I mean, a lot of people think that just, that just magically gets done. And that's not, yep. there's not a staff for that. That's our staff. Yep. Um, well, it's not even that, man. It's the, it's the, it's the hours of, well, of course, in season, they put in a lot of stuff, but leading up to the season, you have, right. you have to, you have to fundraise money. Right. You, you spent hours upon hours, like the big golf tournament. Yeah. You know, they, they spend hours doing that stuff. Right. They spend hours preparing workouts, preparing. You know, it's just it's a lot, man. And and being somebody who who's been in it and knows what they do for the kids. That's another thing too. Not to, I feel like I'm in a defensive mode, but people don't realize either. Like I know that every every parent wants their kid to play at the next level. Right. Okay. Every absolutely. parent, absolutely. Every parent does, and most kids want to play at the next level. Right. Some kids are some kids are blessed with right. talent. Right. Some kids are not. Right. But, but that doesn't mean you can't be a great high school football player. Absolutely. The staff at South Sumter, I can rest assure parents that they do everything in their power. Right. To get their to get kids to the next level. Absolutely. Because I see it. Oh, yeah. I, I've had conversations. Yeah. I have, And too. so I think a lot of parents don't believe that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that parents transfer kids because they want to take them to a better situation that they think that that staff or that program will get their kid to the next level. Yeah. No. The, the, if your kid's going to play at the next level, yeah. South Center staff is going to make sure that it, it happens. Well, you know? think about think about when you were a senior and, you, and you're getting your – things in order for someone to even look at you mm-hmm. and look at what we do for our kids now. I mean, we had no huddle. Nope. Um, no think social, about how no much social media. No social media. Mm-mm. So, I mean, there they, are, you know, I've always, I heard this the other day and, it, and I, I thought it was something, it was a good, Brett Favre, I know you're a big oh, Brett, yeah. Brett Favre fan. Yep. But Deion Sanders, his son was going to Southern Miss and he met up with Brett Favre, who went to Southern Miss. Mm-hmm. And he was telling him, he says, look, it don't matter where you go. You can go to Slippery Rock University. They're going to find you. Yep. If you're that good, yep. they're going to find you. Yep. So all I can – I mean, that, and what I took out of that was just put in the work. Somebody's going to find you. Yeah. But not, don't worry so much about – where are you going to go? Where are you going to end up right. at? Or I have to go here. I got to visit here. Mm-hmm. You know, and you know, I mean, if your dad's Deion Sanders, you, you, it right. is what sure. it is. Yeah. But if you're just a a common person that mm-hmm. wants to go to college, that's skilled. Just do what you do best. Yeah, I mean, you know? <clears throat> yeah, the the game has changed, and of course, I'm living in that currently. Right. Uh, the game has changed so much. I remember. I remember my dad, Coach Sherman, we would take vanilla envelopes. We would stick it with the cover sheet of all the stats and then a big old VHS. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Panasonic. And then, and then you, so you'd mail it off and then you would hope that they would open it. Yeah. And that they would actually plug the tape in and actually watch it. <laughs> right. And I I mean, listen, we we sent that thing. And I was a, a kid who, you know, back then SAT was obviously mandatory. Right. And, you know, I struggled with uh, I hated school. Yeah, me too. And, and so I here here. You know, I, I I did whatever I had to do to fly by the seat of my pants to get through high school. Absolutely. So 
you know, that's another another story. But anyway, so I didn't get an SAT score till late. I had all these colleges interested, but right. no SAT score. And so which is hard to do when right? you have no score. So we'd send out all these tapes and Coach Sherman was like, well, they want to know what you made on your SAT. Well, don't tell them that score. <laughs> I got re- to retake. Uh, uh, keeps hitting the mic. Oh, you're good. Uh, so anyways, so I get to get SAT score till late, so I ended up not signing until May. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, but nowadays it's, I mean – with a click of a button, you can have a, a coach watch your film. Yeah. I mean, literally, you can yeah. tag a coach on Twitter and the coach watches your film. Mm-hmm. Uh, usually. not. I mean, that doesn't just because you tag them doesn't mean they'll watch it. But It's easier know, for them yeah. to watch. And, and, and the thing is, too, is, man, again, hard work. I don't care. If, if you want to achieve something, it's you right. got to work. Right. Period. You got to work. Right. You gotta have work ethic. There's no other way around it. There's not. Thanks for watching part one of this two part segment. Stay tuned for part two.